Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. This week, we're going to be talking about tetraminoes, which are a very popular kind of component that we'll go into a design discussion about now. Ever since Blockus, and I really want to say Patchwork, these little guys have been super popular in a number of board games to date. So let's jump on over to the table next door and see what we have in store. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we did talk a little bit about tetraminoes and polyominoes in our tiles video before, but now we actually have some sample ones here in front of us. These are, again, custom laser cut by the Game Crafter. And the cool thing that I want to point out right now, actually, is the cut values, or cut lines, rather, which are kind of highlighted in the red. So you can see that there's also this dotted blue line inside each shape, and that's going to be the safe zone in case that there's drift. So as I remove the slug and get almost every piece out, there we go, we can see that some drift did occur where the cut line was a little bit too far to the left. And that's okay, we were covered because our safe zones uh, we're still within that bleed area, which is to say that if you did have artwork on your slugs, you want to make sure that it extends a little bit past all those custom cut lines that you create. But to talk a little bit about the mechanics of tetraminoes, there are plenty of games that are inspired by our favorite Tetris pieces. Tetramino comes, I think, from tetra, which is the Greek for four, and ominoes or dominoes, which are kind of some of those favorite two by one shapes. These, however, are different. There's four squares in each of these configurations, and so they can be, as you can imagine, linked together to create maybe some very satisfying, fitting, and puzzly aspects. Oh, there we go. Not too shabby. I think one of the first games that really kicked off Tetraminoes is, of course, the classic game Tetris. Haha, <laughs> a video game where the shapes are kind of falling down uh, from the top of the screen, and you're trying to, again, satisfyingly create lines for each of them in a competition either against yourself, the game, or another player. In modern board games, I believe really the one responsible for this huge flood of Tetramino games is none other than Patchwork by Uwe Rosenberg. In this game, you have a square of spaces that you are trying to cover up with different tiles that are representative of, of quilt. And here you'll be competing to fill as many of the spaces on your board as you can before the end of the game. There's a really neat drafting mechanic that comes into play as well with a kind of rotating marker that allows you to choose a piece, I want to say up to four away from wherever it is. As it moves to fill in that space of a newly taken tile, that then gives your opposing player new options. And so it's a give and take about what you're going to take for yourself and also what you're going to open up or give to your opponent. I myself am really excited about kind of just, again, how these pieces can fit together and different innovative ways to use them. In a game like Indian Summer, I want to say that the tiles themselves actually have holes cut out of them sometimes, and those you can actually put on top of other tiles. I had a game idea of my own about archaeology, where maybe the bottom side would have some kind of artifacts or whatnot that you were trying to dig up for yourself from an opponent's excavation site. Another of those square boards that you might trade to another player during the game. But let's go ahead and open up the one tetramino game or polyamino game that I do own and see how they implement these components. In the game Baron Park, each player will be in charge of creating the best bear park that they can. Very similar to a zoo, but in this case, the only animals are our favorite and cuddly sometimes bears. What I really love about this game is just how accessible it is. On a turn, we'll be taking tiles and trying to cover up these different spaces, which will then allow us to take a new tile from this very board. Now, I've only populated half of it, but you can imagine that each of these spaces correlate to what type of tile you can take on your next turn. So in the case of this kind of cement mixer, any tile on the left side is it becomes available, but if you cover up the red or orange digger, as we see here on this additional tile, you can take any of these special shaped pieces. You'll notice that these are polyaminos because they have more than just four and come in some pretty crazy configurations, as you see here. The goal of this game is similar to Patchwork, where you want to cover as many spaces as you can to get the most victory points. 
Now, there's a little bit of a racing mechanic here where you can see that the different tiles, as they're taken, benefit whoever takes from each one first with decreasing victory points from each subsequent space. But you have to, again, be thinking about what you're leaving open for yourself and then what tile you'll be able to take on your next turn with those strategic choices. By the end of the game, you'll have populated a couple of these different squares with all these colorful tiles featuring polar bears, black bears, panda bears, and grizzly bears. I take it back, these are actually koala bears. It's a very fun game that you can jump into right away and has that satisfying effect of being able to fully fill a given space. Other games that use polyominoes and combine them with other mechanics include A Feast for Odin, Cottage Garden, and a recent Kickstarter game, Tasty Humans, that uses the similar Tetris sort of style of falling tiles, but also has them breaking apart from each other if there were, to say, a piece that sticks out along the bottom. There are a lot of neat things that are available with tetrominoes and polyominoes, and I look forward to seeing what new way to use them you can come up with. I hope this video gave you some inspiration for how you can use these really neat components. Very simple and, I want to say, cost-friendly. If you're currently designing a game that uses them, please let us know in the comments below and we can see what you're up to. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on future content like this. As always, I'm Ben, this has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint, and together, let's build something great.